Millican is known to offer several benefits to orchids, enhancing their overall growth, resilience, and resistance to various stress factors. These benefits are now being administered to my summer blooming Phalaenopsis in preparation for the stress they are going to endure during my winters. And I will link a video in the description that covers my conditions during a 12 month time frame, giving you a better understanding of why I say this with some trepidation in my voice. In this video, I'm going to explain the benefits of silicon for orchids in a little more detail, how to use silicon for maximum effect and uptake, and don't be put off if you see that I'm growing in Lekka. This applies for organic media as well. But I will also address the negative side effects where things could go wrong so that you're aware of that being a possibility. While the benefits sound like the holy grail of orchid growing, getting it wrong can be detrimental. Welcome, it's good to have you here. I appreciate that you clicked on this video and hope that it will help you make a conscious decision if your orchids could possibly benefit from having a little silicon added to their diet, even if you're not faced with the same seasonal conditions that I am growing in, but are growing in a controlled environment. Let's start with the benefits because they are what I am wanting out of this application. Oh, and P.S. This does not apply exclusively to summer bloomers. I just happen to focus on them in this video because a visual update as I clean and fill the masks with my silicon solution, I thought, why not talk about it at the same time? And right out of the gate, we're going with increased strength and rigidity. Silicon in cell walls increases the rigidity and strength of the plant tissues, making orchids more resistant to physical damage, such as bending or breaking. And for a clumsy orchid grower like me, this is a wonderful safeguard. <laughs> Then there's pest and pathogen resistance. The presence of silicon in cell tissue forms a physical barrier that can deter insects and pathogens from penetrating plant tissues. This can reduce the likelihood of pest infestations and disease outbreaks in orchids. Well, it would appear that scale doesn't seem to have gotten the memo. <laughs> then there's drought and heat tolerance that silicon supplementation has been associated with improved water retention and heat tolerance. Orchids treated with silicon may be better equipped to withstand periods of drought and high temperatures. Translation, this means that their cuticle protecting their structures is strengthened and during drought or extreme heat, they are better equipped to balance out the transpiration through the leaves. And then here's a goodie, enhanced nutrient uptake. Silicon can facilitate the uptake of certain nutrients, particularly those involved in the plant defense mechanisms such as potassium and calcium, and we like that. Get that immobile nutrient calcium to the new cells faster. And it has been suggested that the flower quality of orchids that are given some silicon as a supplement is marginally improved, supposedly leading to brighter colors, increased flower longevity, and improved petal thickness. I cannot speak on that because I have been applying silicon on a regular basis for the past years, so I have no way of saying any different. My collection has not been without silicon in five years, so I have no comparison. But it is a nice little nugget of intel and maybe it'll make a difference for you if you start using silicon. Let me know. These things take time, but if you have experience with not having used silicon and then started using it and can tell the difference, let me and others know in the comments. I would appreciate that very much. So how do we get this good stuff into our orchids? Now the recommended application of silicon for orchids typically involves using potassium silicate, a soluble form of silicon. When it comes to the concentration and how I determine how much goes into my water, I use parts per million. That is pretty universal across the board for everything with regards to orchids and strength of a fertilizer or a supplement. So if your manufacturer label says milliliters or ounces, or whatever, and you have a TDS meter, what I am referring to here is parts per million. So if you're going to now ask how much, let me tell you the concentration of the silicon solution in my case today is going to be expressed in parts per million and that the pH range for applying silicon should be around 5.5 to 7. So what is going into my pots are 55 parts per million of silicon at a pH of 6.3. Not that I went to the exact pH or exact parts per million of my solution, but with a 10 liter bucket, I estimated that 40 drops of my 
high silicon product would get me to 50 parts per million or thereabouts. The recommended concentration of silicon is between 25 parts per million and 60 parts per million, depending on the size of the orchid. So I would say with my 55 parts per million, nailed it. <laughs> when I administer it to my seedlings though, I go for the 25 parts per million. And how often do I do this and when? Okay, in general, silicon supplementation can be done on a regular basis, usually every two to four weeks during the active growing season of the orchid. However, the frequency can vary depending on the specific orchid species, growing conditions, and the product being used. It is advisable to use the manufacturer's recommendation for the specific silicon product you're using. If I were to grow in a controlled environment, I would do the regular application based on the activity of the orchid in question as in active growth which includes if only roots are growing and there is not actually a new growth emerging however because my conditions are not controlled and i depend on the elements for light and temperature i cannot do soaks like these during the winter months or else the roots of my orchids would get too cold so my application starts end of april through mid november during which the night temperatures are not so harsh and the root systems can handle the wetter conditions in the pot I do not do this during the winter for any of my warm to hot growers and well, summer blooming phalaenopsis definitely fall into that category. However, I always live in hope that my providing silicon to my warm to hot growing orchids does have some benefits to help them cope and come through the other end of the winter alive. My Leodora sweet memory, it was a close call last winter, the cells were starting to collapse, so I continue to live in hope and not giving them silicon yeah <laughs> banish the thought <laughs> but nothing in the orchid hobby is straightforward or else we would all be master growers and a video like this would not be of any interest so while there are many benefits let's talk about what happens if we get things wrong and what not to do and how to avoid making the following mistakes but first would you please give this video a thumbs up share it with anyone you know who might be interested and if you are here and are not subscribed please subscribe at the time of filming this video my analytics are showing me that i have 74 percent watching my channel that have not subscribed i would love to have your vote of confidence and hope you will hit the subscribe icon today to get that percentage down thank you so much now be aware of the following when it comes to silicon application the ph imbalance excessive silicon supplementation can lead to an increase in the ph of the growing media this alkaline shift can affect nutrient availability and uptake by the orchids potentially leading to nutrient deficiencies and that is why i recommend to apply silicon by itself not added to the fertilizer you use because we want the orchids to absorb the silicon and not interfere with anything else that is going on if there were to be any clashes with other nutrients or the ph is too high then other nutrients will be locked out and for that reason i also flush my pots through after every silicon soak with plain water the cleanest water that i have which is ro water and until the reservoir doesn't dry out of its own accord which i fill with ro water only after a silicon soak i do not apply anything else not fertilizer nothing this keeps my media clean and it'll be ready to go with whatever solution at whatever ph i have for the next go around and the same would apply if you're growing in organic media flush the pot through after doing a silicon application so that the ph doesn't rise in your pot and then there could be mineral imbalances if silicon is over applied without proper consideration of other nutrients it can disrupt the balance of other essential minerals in the growing medium this may negatively impact the overall health of the orchids translation too much love on our orchids basically no bueno the quantities are so minute even for large orchids that we are tempted to throw in more parts per million as well as more often to get the goodies into our orchids slow and steady wins the race in the orchid hobby the metabolism of these plants cannot take more than small amounts of silicon because it is so slow and now because of what i've just said the next downside could be reduced growth 
In some cases, excessive silicon application might lead to reduced growth and development of the orchids. This is more likely to occur if the pH of the growing medium becomes too high. When you add silicon to your water, do not be shocked at how high your pH is. It shoots way up. When I added only 40 drops into my 10 liter bucket, my pH went to 9.7. So I had to bring the pH down to anywhere between 5.5 and 7 by using a pH down. Because of how silicon raises the pH, sometimes I use it as a pH up if for some reason my pH for other solutions turned out to be too low. It can take only one or two drops of silicon in a 10 liter bucket to raise the pH up to an acceptable level again, so keep that in mind. If you have never used silicon before, depending on how concentrated your brand is, it will raise the pH to silly levels and all you need to do is use pH down to make the pH agreeable for your orchids. And then there's also buildup and clogging. Silicon residue can accumulate in irrigation systems, causing clogs and affecting the distribution of water and nutrients to the orchids. So, translation. For orchids that are on a drip system or if you mist your orchids from above and have diluted nutrients in your misting system, know that when water evaporates and there is silicon in the water over time, the silicon will stay behind. It looks like calcium deposits, but usually our water is free of high calcium. Even if we do use mains water, when we apply it to our orchids, it would be the silicon that shows as white deposits over time. The accumulation will clog up the tiny holes for the drip systems or the misters. It is easily removed, brushed out with a little toothbrush or something, or just switching the emitters. Now, the biggest takeaway for getting the silicon to work with all the benefits is to carefully monitor the pH of the growing medium and pH the solution to fall between 5.5 and 7. Also, follow the recommended application rates and ensure a balanced nutrient regimen alongside silicon supplementation. Keeping in mind that orchid care can be specific to different species, if you have any questions specific to your climate to an orchid and have not used silicon before, then please let me know in the comments. I also have an orchid details form that you can fill out in which you can provide me a lot of information about your conditions, your growing method, how much experience do you have growing orchids, etc. I will also link that form in the description with the corresponding video on how it all works. Please understand that the orchid ninjas get preferred treatment when it comes to a response. So if you are not an orchid ninja, a member of the channel in YouTube lingo, consider joining my membership for more perks than just preferred treatment on help with your orchids. I hope that this video was informative, that it gave you food for thought, <laughs> pun intended, and maybe even confirmed something you already knew about silicon. Personally, if it were to have the same benefits for me, I would drink the stuff. <laughs> just kidding. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a fabulous day. As per usual, though, I attach a condition to that, and that is that you stay safe. Hope to see you in the next video or in any of the upcoming recommended videos on the pop-up cards. Take care. Bye.